Hello and welcome. In this tutorial we are going to model the three-dimensional bridge shown. The bridge consists of beams in a truss structure on a large solid flat plate for the bridge floor. The bridge will be loaded with a uniformly distributed pressure load across the entire floor of the bridge. We will use sketch planes to sketch in 3D. We will create the beam cross section like we did in the previous tutorial. We will introduce the blend tool in 3D mode. We will properly connect beam and solid elements. We will introduce contacts and connections and we will introduce pressure loads. We will compute the deflections and stresses in both the beams and the bridge floor. I hope you enjoy the tutorial. After opening space claim, the first thing I want to do is change the units from the default millimeters to meters. So I'll left click on file, click space claim options, click on units. I'll leave the units for this document and I'll change the drop down on millimeters to meters. I'll scroll to the bottom and I will enter in 0 0.1 and I'll leave the number of grids grid lines per major as 10 and I can click OK. Now I'm ready to start sketching. I like to sketch in the XY plane so I will right click, click on select new sketch plane, move my cursor up till I'm on the XY plane and left click. Now I can hit the plan view button and look at my sketch straight on. I then click my line tool. I'll start here at the center and I will left click and let go and you can see that my line is defined in terms of a magnitude and an angle. I want to look at it in terms of components so I'll come over to the options sketch window scroll down till I hit dimensions select Cartesian dimensions and now I'm given an X and a Y dimension I will type in a minus one tab to go to the next dimension to enter and I have my first line now I will come down and type in a minus one tab and a minus two and I now have my first <clears throat> the first part of my truss drawn now I'll hit escape three times so one two three middle mouse button I can rotate my structure a little bit come up to 3D mode, click on 3D mode, and now I can grab this line, select it by clicking the left mouse button, control left mouse button, the next line, come up to the move icon, click on move, and holding down the control button, I will move this in the Z direction to build the opposite half, and I'll move it and type in three meters, type in three, and there I now have the opposite side. I hit escape once and now I'm ready to connect these two members together with my top beam. I do that using the blend tool. So I'll come to the blend tool, click on blend. I'll come and click on that first dot at the top where the two lines come together. Then I will control click the second dot and my line is drawn. But if you come over here to curves and open your drop down, you see that you only have four lines where there should be five. So in order for this to be defined as a line, you actually have to hit enter. And now I have my fifth line there. Now I'm ready to copy these lines. So I'll come over here to my structure tree, left click the top line, shift left click the bottom line that selects them all. I can go to the move tool and holding down the control and a move is a copy command so hold down control highlight the red arrow or the x-axis move and copy enter in two and now I can do that again so control copy move it to enter and one more time I like the red arrow, control, click, to enter. I now have 
a lot of the beams drawn in my truss. I can hit my control middle mouse button and move my structure. I can hit escape and now I have to put on the floor I will come up to sketch mode keeping a visual on where this line is. Click on sketch mode. I will move my cursor so that I get the bottom plane where I want to draw the floor of the bridge and then I will left click to select that plane. Now I'll come up to the rectangular tool and I'll go to where that line is and when I select it I can see that line of my truss. I can then left click and drag my floor. I know that my floor will be three meters wide so I can go three enter tab to switch to the next unit tab eight enter and there's the floor of my truss. I can now escape out of that and come to 3D mode and I can see that I have that part of my structure built. I'm ready to put in these final top lines along the top here. To do that I will come up to the line tool and when I click on that I can see that my grid is down here low so I will right click <clears throat> I'll sketch it, I'll click on the plane, then right click, click on move grid, and I'll move the grid up two meters. Now I'm ready to sketch those lines, so I'll come to the line tool. I'll click on this first point, and now here you want to make sure that these lines are uh, the correct length. Sometimes it's easy to miss that point, so I make sure that I see the two meters and the 90 degrees and then I left click, come and see the next one, 2 meters, 180, left click, 180, 2 meters, and left click. Now I hit escape once, I'll come over to the other side, click on the line until I, or move on the line until I get the, the circle, the sphere, then I left click, I will move to the next line, 2 meters, left click, two meters left click and two meters left click. I now hit escape and my trusses and bridge is pretty well designed. I need to escape again and now I come up to along the top to prepare and I'll hit profiles and I'll enter in the cross section. It's a rectangular cross section I will scroll down until I hit beam profiles, open up the beam profiles, and right click on the rectangle, hit edit beam profile, and I will type in on ruler dimension and 0 0.1 meters, I'll type in 0 0.05, enter, and the same thing here. I'll type in, after clicking on the 0 0.01, 0 0.05, enter. That's my cross section. I can use my middle mouse button and roll out. I can now come back down here to the bottom and click on system to go back to my structure. And now I come up here to the structure along this line and click on structure to get back to my structure tree. I'll scroll to the top and I will left click the top line, scroll to the bottom and shift click the bottom line. That selects them all. Now I will come over and click on create and this will turn my lines into beams. So clicking on create I can see that I now don't have any lines and but I do have a bunch of beams. The last thing I need to do is make sure that all of the beams are connected to each other. And I do this by creating a new component. So I'll come and click on the design tab, then I'll go to select, and now I can come and select these beams. I'll select the top beam, left click, scroll to the bottom, shift left click, and I have them all selected. And now I will right click and select move to new component. 
the new component, I can give it a name. I can call it Beams and then click Enter. After I've created the new component and named it, I need to drop down to Share Topology in the Properties window and change that Share Topology from None to Merge. That will let all of the beams be connected together and act as a truss system. I'm now ready to save this file and enter ANSYS Mechanical. So I'll save it to the directory in which I'm working and open ANSYS Mechanical. So once ANSYS Mechanical has opened, you can see that it has brought in our bridge system, but we have question marks in the geometry. And so I can open the geometry and I can see that the question mark resides in the surface. So if I click on surface, I can come down to the details of the surface and I can see that it is missing a thickness. And so the question mark is there because ANSYS doesn't know the thickness of our plate. So I will click on that box and enter 0 0.05, enter. And now I can see that I have green check marks on my surface and on my geometry. So I can go ahead and close that, minimize that tree. My materials have a green check. I can see that I have structural steel. Everything's made out of structural steel. Um, I have my cross sections. I can see my rectangular cross section. Coordinate systems are okay. Now I have a green check mark by connections. If I click on connections, I can see that there have been no added connections. And I have connected all of my beams together, and I did that in space claim, but I now need to connect my beams to my plate. So to do that, I will come up to Connections, right-click, Insert Manual Contact Region. And now when I come to this, it asks for a contact and it asks for a target. So I'm going to select all the nodes or vertices on these beams where they connect to the plate as the contact, and then the target will be the plate. So I will come up and I will click on this surface and then I will right click and I will say hide body. Now the face is gone and I can come up and click on the vertex selector and I can come and select all these vertexes in that will connect to the plate. So clicking on those and selecting all of those, I can come over and then on the contact, click on no selection and click apply and you can see that it says I have 10 vertices. Now I come to the target so I will have to right click, left click show all bodies and now my plate's back. I'll come up to the plane selector, select this plane and click on the target and then click apply and I can see that I have one face. So I have now built my contacts and I have green check marks on everything. As I look down through here, I can see that the contact between the beams and the plate is bonded. I can click on this and I could enter in no separation, frictionless, rough or frictional, different types of contacts. For this particular situation though, the bonded contact is the best model for what I'm trying to do, which implies that the beams are rigidly fixed and, and firmly connected to the plate. So I'm ready to leave connections. I can come down to mesh and then come up and click generate. And while it generates a mesh, I can see that this is a very coarse mesh. Um, and I would likely want to do some refinement, maybe some localized refinement. But for this model, I'm going to go ahead and accept this default mesh. I'll use my middle mouse scroll button to minimize the window or reduce the size of the window a little bit, zoom out. Now I come to Static Structural, and I need to enter my boundary conditions. So I'll click on Static Structural. I'll come up to Fixed and click on Fixed. I'll middle mouse button and roll my edge around so that I can line select and I'll come up and click on line select. I'll click this line 
and I will come down and click apply. So that line is fixed. It can't rotate, deform, or move. Now I will come to boundary condition static structural and I will enter a displacement boundary condition. I'm still on line select. I'll come to this line and click on that line. Then I'll come over and I will fix it in the Y direction. So I'll click on Y, type in zero, enter. And I need to tell it that that line is the one I want. So I'll come up to geometry, click apply, and I now have the one edge. I can review my boundary conditions by clicking on fixed support. And it says fixed support and points to this line. I can click on displacement and it says that my displacement is free in X, fixed in Y, and free in Z, and that this line is the line that has been selected for those boundary conditions. So those are the boundary conditions I'll use. I'll now come and be on static structure again and I'll come to loads and I'll apply a pressure load and I'll go to the surface select tool, you can see that the surface select tool is the only one that's available to select for a pressure load, which makes sense. Um, so I'll come down and I'll select this face and I can come and click apply and it says one face has been selected and I'll come over and enter in a pressure of 200 pascals. Enter. I now have my pressure applied and I can review that by clicking on pressure here, seeing that it's on that face and in that direction. I'm ready to select the output, so I'll come to solution. I'll come up to stress and click on equivalent stress. I'll click on deformation and click on directional deformation and then I'll come down here to orientation and I want the deformation in the y-axis not the x so I'll click on the box click again and then click y-axis so I now have the equivalent stress and the y deformation on my plate but this will not compute the values for the beams I need to come up and enter in what we call a beam tool the beam tool can be found in the toolbox drop down. So I'll click on toolbox drop down and click on beam tool. Then if I come over here and open up beam tool by default, I get the direct stress, the maximum combined stress, and the minimum combined stress. So I can go ahead now and solve this model. So I can come up and click on solve. While it solves, I'll do a quick pause. My solution came back with green checks. I can come through now and look at the equivalent stress. And here's the equivalent stress in, in the plate. I can click on the directional deformation. And that seems to make sense. Things are a little bit off center. And that's because this boundary condition over here is fixed, where this is simply supported. And so I would not expect this to be exactly centered. I can then also come down and look at my beam tool and click on the stresses in direct stresses in my beams, the maximum combined stress. If I want to look at the deformations, what I can do is come back up here to solution and go to my beam tool and click on my beam tool over here. And then I can come up and click on directional and I can click on total. If I come back to directional, I can click in an x-axis or a y-axis. I might want both of them so I'd enter in another directional and leave that one as x. I can now come up and click on solution again and then click solve and this will update very quickly with these deformations and I can look at the deformations in the